some simple mistake. The Chief Justice was is staying in Beverly for a few quiet days of work while I visited Providence with our two sons. He is not expected back until tomorrow. Kurtz did not claim responsibility for refuting her. Your chambermaid, he said, indicating the bigger of the two servants, found his body, madam, outside near the river. Nell Ranny, the chambermaid, wailed with guilt for the discovery. She did not notice that there were a few blood-stained maggot remains in the pouch of her apron. It appears to have happened several days ago. Your husband never departed for the country, I'm afraid, Kurt said, worried he sounded too blunt. Edna Healy wept slowly at first, as a woman might for a dead household pet, reflective and governed, but without anger. The olive-brown feather protruding from her hat nodded with dignified resistance. Nell looked at Mrs. Healy longingly, then said with great humanity, You ought to come back later in the day, Chief Kurtz, if you please. John Kurtz was grateful for the permission to escape Wide Oaks. He walked with appropriate solemnity toward his new driver, a young and handsome patrolman who was letting down the steps of the police carriage. There was no reason to hurry not with what must be brewing already over this at the central station between the frantic city alderman and Mayor Lincoln, who had already had him by the ears for not raiding enough gambling hells and prostitution houses. A terrible scream cleaved the air before he had walked very far. It belched forth in light echoes from the house's dozen chimneys. Kurtz turned and watched with foolish detachment as Edna Healy, feather hat flying away and hair unloosed in wild peaks, ran onto the front steps and launched a streaking white blur straight for his head. Kurtz would later remember blinking. It seemed all he could do to prevent catastrophe to blink. He bowed to his helplessness. The murder of Artemis Prescott Healy had finished him already. It was not the death itself. Death was as common a visitor in 1865 Boston as ever. Infant sicknesses, consumption and unnamed and unforgiving fevers, uncontainable fires, stampeding riots, young women perishing in childbirth in such great number it seemed that they had never been meant for this world in the first place, and until just six months ago, war, which had reduced thousands upon thousands of Boston boys to names written on black-bordered notices and sent to their families. But the meticulous and nonsensical, the elaborate and meaningless destruction of a single human being at the hands of an unknown. Kurtz was yanked down hard by his coat and tumbled into the soft, sun-drenched lawn. The vase thrown by Mrs. Healy shattered into a thousand blue and ivory shards against the paunch of an oak, one of the trees said to have given the estate its name. Perhaps, Kurtz thought, he should have sent Deputy Chief Savage to handle this after all. Patrolman Nicholas Ray, Kurtz's driver, released his arm and lifted him to his feet. The horses snorted and reared at the end of the carriageway. He did all he knew how. We all did. We didn't deserve this, whatever they say to you, Chief. We didn't deserve any of this. I'm all alone now. Edna Healy raised her clenched hands and then said something that shocked.